Let's do another example from start to finish, putting all the pieces together so we can see the big picture. Current antacid provides relief for 70% of the people who use it, pharmaceutical company, so similar to one of the pieces that we've been looking at, has a new drug and they wanna see whether it's more effective. They're gonna run a study with 100 randomly selected participants, 75% of them experience relief. Is this evidence the new drug is better? So, our hypotheses, we'll start with our null and all, all our alternative. We know the null will always look like P is equal to some number. The alternative has more p possibilities. So what are we trying to find evidence of? What we're trying to test is our alternative hypothesis. We're looking for evidence that the new drug is better. That's our alternative hypothesis. So the null is the other outcome, right? That the new drug is the same as the old drug. And specifically the same would be 70% relief. So what are our hypotheses going to look like? Well, that the new drug is 70% just like the old one. Better than 70% would be more relief. So we want to check to see, can we use a sampling distribution? We need randomization. We need independence, which is the 10% condition usually. And we need sample size. 10 successes and 10 failures is what we should expect. So this time, it finally told us that they're randomly selected. Good. We're looking at uh, 100 people. This is our sample size. Yeah, we can assume that this is less than 10% of the population. And sample size, again, what is n times p? n was 100. p, we're assuming to be 0.7. We would expect 70 people to experience relief. That's at least 10. Good. And how many would we expect to not experience relief? Good. That's also at least 10. So all these conditions are satisfied. Sampling distribution of proportion says that because of that, E hat, our sample proportion, will be normally distributed with these parameters. Well, P, we said was 0.7. Square root of PQ over N, we can find that too. Remember, our sample size was 100. 0 0.04583. Find the test statistic. Our test statistic was p hat minus p over this. p hat, I don't know. What was our sample? What proportion of our sample experienced relief? 75 out of 100, 0.75. Point seven five minus P, which was 0.7, all over 0 0.04583. Our test statistic is whatever that is. Make sure to use parentheses. We'll get our test statistic is 1.0910. We're about one standard deviation above the mean here. Not super common, but not super uncommon either to be one standard deviation above the mean. We know that 68% of the data is within one standard deviation because of the empirical rule, which means that 32% will be outside of one standard deviation. So we're not super rare here. But that's our sampling distribution. That's our test statistic. Calculate the p-value. 
Which test do we need to use? Well, where is that? <laughs> Right-tailed test, left-tailed test, or two-tailed test? We have to look at the alternative hypothesis to answer that question. Well, we're going to use a right-tailed test. So the p-value is just the probability that z is at least our test statistic of, of 1.0910. We get that from this right tail test. So to find the probability of a standard normal random variable, we use GeoGebra. Standard normal means mean of zero, standard deviation of one. We need to be greater than, so we're going to use this button down here. Then we just type in 1.04. Wait, what was it? 1.0910. And there's about a 13.76% chance of this happening. So not a big percent, but certainly not unreasonable to expect this to happen. Our p-value is not less than alpha. It's bigger than alpha. Alpha is usually 5%. 13% is definitely bigger than 5%. So we do not reject the null. This is the triple negative one. So what our conclusion will look like, it'll always look kind of the same, is there is not enough evidence to reject the null. The null is that the new drug is the same. Rejecting the null, is that the new drug is better. So there's not enough evidence to say the new drug is better. That's what hypothesis testing is gonna look like. One full example that I went through a little quicker than each of these individual pieces to kind of connect it all together. The old drug was 70%. We're curious whether this new drug is better than 70%. And again, our, our new drug looked a little better than 70%, right? We found 75% from our study. But remember that things are random. And what we just did is we said, this is not enough evidence. Like, it's possible to have given 100 people the old drug and have them have this many people find relief. And in fact, we found that likelihood. We said that 13.76% of the time you could have given the, the group the old drug and gotten this good of results. That's what this probability means. We found that, yes, yeah, almost 14% of the time you could have given the old drug and had this good stuff happen. So we're not proving anything's different because that would be perfectly believable. Unlikely, it's not a huge percent, but perfectly believable. That's how this all ties together. If you're missing confidence intervals, that's what we got in the next video. Let me know if you have questions.